G'day everyone and welcome to the August 2021 edition of Australian Model Railway News. So right before we get into this video, I will let you know that I have everything timestamped down below. So if there is a particular bit of information you wanna to skip to or come back to, it is all there and it is all marked in the description as well. So without any more chit chat, let's get into the news. So first up today, Ixon models were advised that their J-Class locomotive shipment was to leave China on the 24th of August, which was the next available shipment. They've stated that the shipment occupies 7.5 cubic meters and weighs 1.5 tons. So it's quite a big order. Without knowing for sure how long offloading will take to get through customs, they hope to have the J-classes in their hands on or about Monday the 13th of September. They still have to do unpacking, checking, photography, and repacking for shop orders to be completed. So all shops can proceed with their pre-orders around the end of September. Ixon have also said that they are overwhelmed with the amount of pre-orders that have been put through by shops, and close to a thousand of the 1600 locos are now spoken for. However, they need to advise the J459 is now sold out and will only be available from the shops that have ordered them, and it will not be available from the Ixon web store. Ixon have also advised that locomotive J151 is also quite low in stock numbers or availability going forward. That's the locomotive I actually put my name down for one at my local model railway store. So if you do want one of those or another number, you have to put an order in through your local stockist of Ixon as they are not available from their web store. But let's hope that they're available nice and soon. These locomotives are priced at $549.95, which I think is a pretty good price point for a DC model, which is DCC ready. Now I will touch on the DCC aspect with another manufacturer a little bit later on. So stay tuned for that. Precision Models gave us a really big update on a lot of their models, uh, which are about to come out. So I guess we'll start with the Deb set. They're currently working on the tooling corrections and have been testing the samples and are pleased with the running of the sets. Once they've received revised tooling samples, they will proceed with the painted samples. These are set to be released still in 2021, according to their website. There has also been further delays on the GT46C Ace on the rerun of their painted samples. Updated PCB has been checked and works well with their DCC sound file. Flashing ditch lights and light logic features, all similar to what they have in their NR class locomotives. And there will be an update with photos once samples have arrived. These locos are a rerun from 2015 and are still slated for release later this year. They're expecting revised painted samples of the 44 class locomotive in the coming months. As well as that, they've said that they are pretty close to selling out of some of their numbers. They have already confirmed production numbers with the factory, so no further 44s can be added to this production run. So be sure to get an order in to avoid missing out. The G and BL class locomotive painted samples are expected to arrive around the 10th of September and Ascision have said that they will post photos of the painted samples on their social media once they have received them. The NHYH coal hopper. Unfortunately, there has been a delay with the painted samples due to the factory being at full capacity in the production department during the last six months. In order to make painted samples, they need to stop production of a model to slip the painted samples through the painting and printing departments. They've said that they couldn't afford to delay the Tates and E-cars, so they held off making these samples while these items were in production. They hope to receive painted samples soon. As well as that, the C-class painted samples were expected earlier this year, but have suffered the same delay as previously mentioned. In order for them to deliver as many projects as they have so far this year, these couple of projects had to suffer. They are also expecting painted samples soon. The indigenous NR class locomotive has taken a little longer than they expected. They've said that the factory is hating us right now for making them pad print every single dot, line, piece of art, logo, etc., on the side of these two beautiful liveries. They're expecting them to be complete within the coming months. Decisions Victorian Tate Suburban Set and CM Parcel Vans are now available. They've said that this has been the longest and most expensive shipment they have ever received. The Tates left their factory in mid-June for a vessel departing Hong Kong. At the end of June, arriving some five weeks later, costing over $7,000 just to ship the container. 18 months ago, their shipments would have taken exactly two weeks to arrive from Hong Kong at a cost of no more than $1,000. 
This just shows worldwide demand for product from China and the delays for additional costs will now incur moving forward. Now the Tate and CM parcel vans were released as a DC model and there is going to be an option for DCC sound, although you'll have to install it yourself. And it is also currently unavailable. They have popped a video on their social media of the Tates running with their factory sound. The, sound, the sounds themselves will be programmed on an ESU Loksound V5 and V5 FX decoders, which will be ready to install, which should be a straight up just plug and play installation. They've said that they have also produced a different sound file for the CM parcel vans. They've said that these will be available sometime in the near future. Unfortunately, ESU is suffering from a worldwide shortage of electronic components. And so yeah, there is still no stock available, at least at the time of recording this video. So they've asked to keep an eye on their DCC and Sounds product page. When stock arrives, you'll be able to purchase this from their website and at Australian Modeler. Ascision have also said that they are working on sound files for models that were previously released without sound options. So that's pretty exciting. And I wonder what will be in that uh, lot. So keep an eye on that page for more information. Just jumping back to the Tates and CM vans really quickly. The CM vans are now sold out on Australian Modeler and Decision, and some of the Tate set numbers are running quite low. I actually have already picked up my CM van, although there is not going to be a review for this one just yet, as I am going to wait for the DCC components to become available, as well as getting a Tate set on top. And I'm gonna to touch on the, the sound file uh, options a little bit later on, but yeah, um, if you do wanna see a review of the DC versions of these running, I would suggest checking out Martin Bennett's uh, video on his channel, which is Tate Set, and he has both the CM van and the Tate Set running on a DC layout, and he does go into a pretty good uh, review of the product itself. So I'll leave a link to that as well down in the description below. Also, pre-orders for the CDY NQKY wagons, CTS NG VF NPEF hoppers, and E-type passenger cars have now finished, which means that they might be really, really close. Well, I have to assume so anyway, but I guess we'll wait and see. And lastly from Ascision, their N scale range. They've said that we will soon have a date for the NR and NHFF coal hoppers Decision have said that these are exact replicas of their super detailed HO examples, right down to the small cabinet printing along the locomotive long hood. As soon as their factory confirms a production date, Decision will release a order form at a discounted price for a short period of time. So keep an eye out for that. Over at DCC Sound, they have released a chipset and sound set and sound files, their own versions of these for the Tate set and CM vans. These are currently unavailable uh, due to the aforementioned uh, shortage of ESU and well, global shortage of electronic components. Uh, however, they have posted a video on their YouTube and it does sound quite good. Now I should point out that these are different sound files from the Ascision one to these guys one. Now that's why I'm also kind of holding off on buying sound for my own locomotives because I think I'll get one of the DCC sound versions and one of the Ascision ones and we'll compare the pair. Now DCC Sound have said that a huge amount of programming and audio time has been put into this. With 12 lighting options on the parcel van model, they have a headlight, parcel van destination board, red markers for each end, as well as canopy lights that have been programmed to reflect prototypical operation for the various lines in Melbourne. There are eight different combinations of canopy lights, all controlled by one function key. So the user can simply scroll through to select which canopy light combination should be on. They've said that they'll have a video coming soon, but in the meantime, here is a list of the combinations. DCC Sound also have an option for a premium upgraded speaker, specifically designed for Ascision's tape model, far improving the sound quality. A 13 by 18 millimeter sugar cube driver for maximum sound quality within a compact form. Although they are waiting for the electrical components to become available, now that that project for the Tates and the CM vans is done, they are turning their attention to the Ixon J-Class, which I did mention doesn't come in a DCC model, only DCC ready. DCC Sound has stated, 
Sounds from J549 have been mastered using Adobe Audition, while final tweaks to the sounds and how they interact with the decoder are being made using ESU's Loop Programmer software. The J Class project currently has over 500 audio files for the chuff alone. Many Steam projects have typically one tenth of that. Here's an example of the heavy load sequence as modeled in the Loop Programmer software. It uses all 100 chuffs, 25 different samples of the four chuff per wheel revolution. Recorded while going up a grade, the maximum allowable in ESU's Loop Program software. Most Steam projects include four or eight chuffs at most and then repeat those. Outside the decoder, a new speaker has been designed for the available space in the tender. Testing is in progress to decide on the best combination of drivers and enclosure. They also have sound files on their website available for download if you do have a programmer, as well as other bits and pieces, all designed and made in Australia. Pretty neat. Casula Hobbies have announced that the Arnott's or the ABV van has now arrived at customs. I went over these wagons in the May news video. So if you do want to find out more information, check out that video. But I assume that we will get another update in terms of photos very, very soon. Eudemonic Controllers, an Australian product, which is both designed and assembled here has been brought to my attention and I feel that I should share with everyone a bit about eudaimonic controllers. All the eudaimonic controllers have bi-directional speed controls. The knobs are machined aluminium and have the feel of a high-end audio amplifiers volume control, both weighty and smooth. There is an onboard microcontroller that handles everything. It runs software that smoothly accelerates and decelerates the trains. It's a bit like what happens inside of a DCC module. So you get the smooth running of DCC without the need to upgrade to a DCC system. The Eudaimonic controllers incorporate momentary voltage suppression and supply very clean noise-free power to the track. Any motors over 14 volts are completely removed from the track by the Eudaimonic controllers. A couple of the key points with the Eudaimonic controllers, they're easy to install, easy to use, large sized bi-directional speed controls, Precision train control, speed limited for realism. Inbuilt inverter gives smooth acceleration and deceleration, so no sudden stops. Excellent slow speed running for switching and shunting. Thermal shutdown during overload or short circuit conditions. Normal operation resumes once the incident has been corrected. Now, Eudaimonic controllers have said that these controllers will work with some DCC locos, although you'll have to check the chips to see if they will actually work with DC controls because not all of them do. If you'd like to find out more about eudaimonic controllers, I will of course leave a link for this and everything else in the description below. Bernie over at 3D Model Studio has released VR signal boxes, railway gates, and something to fit in with the third time mentioned Tates, the Victorian railway stanchions in both plastic and brass. These products are available via Shapeways in both HO and N scale. Pretty neat and come at a pretty handy time. Over at Gopher Models or Badger Bits, great news for the N scale modelers with the 38 class in both Streamline and Standard versions available again with Kato chassis. When ordering, you do need to state which color you're doing and which number as the decals are individually numbered. Price is $375 plus postage and handling. They have a 422 class locomotive being released around the 1st of October as a kit, including one piece body and a reliable Gopher Models mech as seen in the 42 S, B and GM class locomotives. These will be priced at $240. Decals that have been produced so far include Indian Red, ARG, Freight Rail, NNR, and other schemes in preparation will be Candy, Bicentennial, Reverse, CFCLA, and Oztrack. Linden's trains are doing a conversion for the side mounted aircon access and ditch lights. The 48 class will see a rerun with the factory in China, but in different color schemes to what has already been available. But you'll still be able to purchase older color schemes as well as some new ones. Phil has said that the 73 class locomotive kit of the New South Wales 73 class will be available before Christmas. There is also a 153 horsepower Walker rail motor kit that has been test built. And as soon as the instruction sheet is complete, it'll be released. Over at Buck and Bull Model Trains, they have sound install options for the Gopher Models 42 S, B and GM locomotives. They're using a Zimo sound decoder. 
with a 15 by 11 millimeter sugar cube speaker with custom enclosure as well as a stay of life, which is all incredibly impressive to fit into such a small body. This costs $220 and is all installed by Jared himself. Here's a sample of the running model. Trainorama's 930s have now arrived and are being sold out of Bob's Hobbies in Seven Hills, New South Wales. They've hit the store priced at $325 for a DC model plus about $16 postage. Some of the features of these models include a five pole skew wound motor, twin flywheels, metal chassis, all wheel pick up and drive, RP25 profile wheels, working directional headlights and marker lights, DCC and sound ready. They do require a 21 pin decoder, but apparently have the speaker already pre-fitted. Flushed glazed windows, brass etched grills, KD couplers, and a cab interior with crew. And there are 10 options available. If you are looking to purchase one of them, head over to Bob's Hobbies website where they have them all listed. Queensland's Whiskey Models did release a couple of months ago, but I did forget to mention it in a previous video, HO N3.5 Flexi Track. This is the first time an Australian model manufacturer has produced track. It's designed to be compatible with Pico, Shinohara, Microengineering, BMO, Tilling and Imon Track. The track is Code 75 Nickel Silver Rail with ultra fine scale injection molded sleepers. It's compatible with all major brands using Code 75 and Code 80 Rail, compatible with all major branded rail joiners, and it has accurate and prototypical sleeper dimensions and spacing for Queensland narrow gauge, and they've also said that it is vegan friendly. A box of 15 lengths will set you back $150. Australian company SMS Paints, which was started in 2016, recently released a selection of commonly used Australian railway colours. These include V-Line Orange, Australian National Green, Australian National Yellow, V-Line Grey, Premium Victorian Railways Red, as well as Tuscan, Deep Indian Red, and more. They also have paint to match Melbourne trams and have told me that we will soon see a paint release that will match Sydney tramways. So very exciting for an all Australian company. They also have weathering powders, which I use and have been quite happy with their products and it's always good to support local. Custom Hobby decals have recently released an update to the set of decals for the N scale 81 class to provide hobbyists with a wider range of locos. They've also updated their Southern Aurora decal sets. Not only does the new set cater for the full 14 car consist, but they also have separate decals for the front and rear signage. These are available in both HO and N scale, as well as many other railway and industrial related decals. Over at On Track Models, Graham Baker has taken over for the running of On Track Models from Craig Hill. Previously, Graham has done the R&D side of the business, plus artwork and licensing with the factory. Prior to On Track, he produced artwork for several manufacturers. They'll be updating their blog and there'll be an email post to the subscribers within about a week or so of me releasing this video. They've also said that the factory has advised that the New South Wales 45 Louver vans are on schedule for delivery later this year. Once the shipping date has been advised, they will open up pre-orders on the OTM website. They've also been discussing a short rerun of the 56 foot Victorian Railways vans due next year, as well as that, an unannounced or new Victorian Railways wagon to commence design work in the new year. And lastly for the month, IDR models have sent running samples of their announced derm and rail car trailer. And here we have the first bit of test footage. So 
So that's all for Model Railway news. Now, I do realize that was a bit Victoria heavy, but that was all the news that I could get access to. So I do apologize for that, that I didn't touch on a few other states. But if you do want to find out information about other releases, of course, do check out my other videos from previous months. But what are you most excited for? Let us know in the comments below. Now, let's get into exhibition news. Due to the current situation around the country, Epping Model Railway Club's exhibition at Rose Hill Racecourse has been rescheduled for May 14th and 15th, 2022. In addition to the Great Train Show, they are also planning to hold open days and their popular market days with dates to be announced. On the 4th of September in Adelaide, you'll have modelling of the Railways of South Australia Convention held at Flinders Medical Lecture Centre Theatres at Belford Park. For more information, visit their website at www.mrsac.com. And of course, check their website for updates. In Brisbane on September 12th, Union Pacific Model Railroad Club welcomes visitors to view their large American model trains in operation at the club rooms near the Holland Park Sports and Community Club in Holland Park. On October 3rd, AMRA Victoria will hold their open day at the Victorian Model Railway Association Club Rooms in Glen Iris with free entry. Also, that's my Model Railway Club, so if you want to come hang out, I'll be there. October 9 in Caloundra, Queensland, the Sunshine Coast Model Railway Club of Queensland will hold their exhibition, the Uniting Church Hall at the corner of Queen and Ulm Street, Caloundra commencing at 9 a.m. Unfortunately, the Sunbury Model Railway Exhibition in Victoria that was to be held over the 16th and 17th of October has been cancelled. However, over the same weekend in Victoria, Shepparton is still scheduled to hold their Model Railway Exhibition at the Sir Ian McLennan Centre Marutna Recreation Reserve. For more information, visit gvrrailclub.com. In Brisbane on November the 7th, the Railway Modellers Club of Queensland will hold a buy, swap and sell and open day at their club rooms at Buckley Park with over 40 tables of new and pre-loved items for sale. And their large GHO, HO, N3 and N scale layouts will be operating. Next year on the 15th and 16th of January, Cows in Victoria, the Phillip Island and District Railway Modellers Show, the Senior Citizens Hall, Six Lions Court, Cows, Victoria, for more information, visit their website at piadrm.com. And of course, like I said, with current events happening in Australia, do keep an eye on social media, websites, even these videos for more updates and information. Also, if you do have a model railway exhibition, open day or buy, swap and sell day coming up, please get in contact with me and send me an email or reach out on my social media so I can keep adding them to these videos. In a plug for myself, I do have a new product out, which is a Hitachi pin and a State Rail Authorities pin. Both these pins are available on my website as well as other products. Also with the popularity of this Hitachi pin, it looks like there'll be more locomotive pins on the way, but stay tuned for more information about them. On to this month's question, DC or DCC? I prefer DCC. I like the control. I like the sound and the lights and all the things that go with it. I like that if you checked out my previous video, I like that I can control it with my iPad or a phone. I like all of that aspect. Is it too much though? Do you like it? Or are you just happy to have DCC, switch it on, let it run? So let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well as any other feedback about this video. Now, just before I round out the news for the month, I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has watched, shared, subscribed, all of that kind of stuff as we have now hit about 2,000 subscribers. But more importantly, last month's news video hit 10,000 views, which is incredible. And I am overwhelmed with the fact that it got to that kind of number. Um, it makes making these videos all worthwhile. And yeah, really, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So if you haven't already, don't forget to be subscribed to these videos because that really does help out the channel in terms of getting more traction, getting these out to more people. And I'm really, really appreciative of everyone who does hit that subscribe button. That means a lot. Also a massive shout out to the Patreons for the month, uh, new Patreons and existing ones. If you do want to find out more about my Patreon, social media, website, products, 
I'll leave links for all of that as well as everything that I've mentioned in this video in the description below. And like I said before, if you do want to reach out, have a chat, anything like that, all my contact details are in the description as well. So until next month, hooroo.